Hello, I'm Jennifer St George. I'm Senior Lecturer in Family Studies at the Family Action Centre at the University of Newcastle. At the Family Action Centre, we run all sorts of programs for mums, dads and their families. And we teach lots of courses about families, children and community. And we also do research on family life. We'll tell you a bit more about that later. Today, I'm talking with our Distinguished Professor in Family Studies, Alan Hayes. And I have a question for Alan. And the question is, what was your path to becoming a passionate professor focused on families? Well, I had the fortune, uh, the good fortune, to grow up in a country town. And uh, I went to school there and I had some excellent teachers who inspired me and who really gave me um, the start on a lifetime love of learning. And they made it uh, really exciting to follow my interests and to be able to get a clear sense of uh, the depth that you can go into when you learn. And of course, I went on to actually train as a teacher. And at Teachers College, I first encountered the discipline of psychology. I'd never heard much at all about psychology. And in particular, I became very interested in the way that children develop and the importance of their families in, in fostering and promoting that development of each one of us. I went on to university and studied psychology there. And I became increasingly interested in that relationship between children, their families, and also the influences from their communities. They're so important in terms of the ways in which we each develop. And it amazes me that we start out as a, a small collection of cells and we go on to have in our brain, for example, 100 billion nerve cells or neurons. And those neurons can each have 15,000 connections to other neurons. And that's the way we each individually build our brains. Our brains reflect our experiences and they influence every aspect of our life. And basically what they do is reflect the way in which we've also been influenced by our surroundings, by particularly our families, and by also the, all of the experiences we have at school and in our neighbourhood and across our community. And it's been a lifelong passion for me to really think about how each one of us has this journey through life that reflects all of those experiences and enables us to continue powerful learning journeys. So families are fundamentally important to learning, development, and the quality of our whole life. So what was your learning journey, Jennifer? Well, my journey, like yours, Alan, was I was so interested in learning. I was, as a young person, I played a musical instrument and I was fascinated about how I could do that better. And so I got into how do I learn? How do I practice? What's the best way of going about this? And I studied that right through university and even into a master's degree where I um, really looked at just what are the best ways to practice and how do people think. And so this love of understanding how people think, including myself, led me to uh, become a researcher. And when I became a researcher, I found other fields of uh, interaction and learning that were really fascinating for me. And one of those was father-child relationships. And at the same time, as I became a researcher in this area, um, I was encouraged to um, facilitate teaching for, for other people. I was, wanted to help other people learn about um, families and how to think and how to be the, the expert practitioner or expert teacher um, that they wanted to be in their field. So I'm able to use what I'm good at and I'm able to um, facilitate other people's passion for families. So, Alan, if someone said to you, well, what does family studies mean? And what would you say are really two important aspects of family studies? I think the approach we take as the first university in Australia that actually teaches the discipline of family studies is the first aspect would be strengths, that all families have strengths. They may have challenges, they may have and every family has needs, but strength of families is really fundamentally important. 
And the other thing, of course, is that families don't exist in isolation. They exist as part of communities and societies. And the beauty with that is that that gets you to the point of how we can learn more about the way in which we can not only build on the strengths, but also be able to support families so they achieve the things that they want for their children. When I was a researcher looking at mother-child interactions, I'd often ask mothers, well, you know, what do you really want for your child? And the first thing they would say is, I want my child to be happy. And then they'd have another H, they'd say, I want my child to be healthy. And I think they're two important things. And really, you know, it's that old saying, it takes a, a village to raise a child. And the sense of this is, it's a fascinating field to show how people develop and how they build their strengths, how their family is strengthening them, and how they're also supported by their community. So I'd say those two things, strengths and support. Mm. And so, Alan, have you got a challenge for the listeners today about families? I certainly have. For those of you who are in children's university, I'd like you to do the following. I'd like you to think about identifying three of the particular strengths of your individual family and thinking about the influence they have on you as a developing person because that's that relationship between your family, the experiences in your family, what you carry with you. You know, the word family comes from a word that's um, familiar. And familiar means learned in the family. And we learn so much in the family, but then we carry it on through our lives and into our own families when you get old enough to have children of your own. Great. So my challenge to listeners today is to get down and play a game of sock wrestle. Now, sock wrestle is a great game that we use in our father-child uh, studies, and we know that kids and dads love to play this game. So what I'm challenging you to do is find a brother or a sister or a mum or dad or an uncle who might like to play sock wrestle with you. So what you do is you both put on a pair of socks each, you both get down in puppy dog position on the carpet or on the mat, and um, on the word go, you both try to take off each other's socks. And so whoever gets uh, the other the person's socks off is the winner. And if you get the socks off, you can start again. Now, during that game, you'll have lots of fun. And whilst it's fun, it's a good thing. After that game, think about what have I learnt from um, taking part in this game? What did my sister or brother learn about winning and losing? And what do we both learn about cooperating with someone to make sure that the game was always enjoyable? And what did I experience in this game that might be applicable to other parts of my life, whether it's getting on with kids at school, whether it's uh, finding new mates at university when I go to, into first year, or whether it's about um, working with people in a workplace. So that's my challenge to you. What can you learn from Sock Wrestle? So that's about all from us today. But of course, what we want to encourage you to do is learn through life and learn over life. Lifelong learning is what life is about. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks, Alan.